Hello and welcome to week three in our series, The Grace Between, and also our second week of Advent. It's an exciting season here at Nativity, and it's been an exciting season in your life, Daniel. Congratulations. Two weeks ago, Daniel got married, Flash. I did. Yes, congratulations. How was it? It was wonderful. Good. The whole experience, the wedding was great, we great. honeymooned, great. and now we're back in the real world. Well, welcome back. We're very, very Thank happy you. for you. So are you enjoying the series, The Grace Between? Uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I've been gone, so I'm sort of jumping mm -hmm. in mid-series, but um, yeah. it's You were perfectly focused on other Christmas. things. Yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> focused on important things. Well, that's great. Well, this week we're looking at grace, and a byproduct of grace is comfort. And the first scripture that uh, we're going to look at tonight comes from Isaiah. And Dan, if you wouldn't mind uh, reading that, I love this. Mm-hmm. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service has been completed, that his sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Yes, I, th I was the typo in there. I, <laughs> I apologize. But comfort, here's the first sentence says, comfort, give comfort to my people. So it's a command. So God gives us comfort, and we can talk about the spiritual comfort. We can talk about physical comfort, but here it talks about give comfort to my people as a command. So when you think of giving comfort or comfort in general, what comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, we were saying there are the comfortable things in life, but yes. it, this isn't really about being comfortable or helping someone to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Offering comfort, I think, especially in a spiritual sense, is being available. Mm, I mean, I, that's sort good. of the, the biggest thing to me is being available as someone who can offer comfort yeah. to another person. So when they're in that moment of need, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a listening ear or, you know, rubbing someone's back mm -hmm. or, or you're offering words of comfort, um, it can mean different things. But the availability, I think, is the first thing. And God is saying, be available to other people like I'm available to yeah. you. But he also says in the scripture, I love this part, and Father Michael spoke so beautifully about it, that um, when you need to be comforted, it's because you've been through a hurt, a disappointment, a pain, a trauma, whatever it is. Um, but you know it's God speaking to you when God is speaking tenderly. Hmm. So have you ever experienced that in your life, that God has just spoken to you tenderly in a tough time? Yeah, I think... You can hear that in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And in the moment, I don't know that I even realized that it was God speaking to me tenderly. Mm -hmm. um, one moment that just comes to mind when I was deciding whether or not to come move out here to Baltimore and come to yeah. Nativity and just struggled for mm -hmm. many weeks. Really, I was miserable mm -hmm. trying to decide yeah. because I had these two good options and I didn't feel like God was giving me any direction. And I had this moment in the car where the song Oceans came on. Yeah, I love that song. And talked about stepping into the deep. Mm. And and it was just this time when it was exactly what I needed to hear. And yeah. I just started crying. And I oh. probably should have pulled over. But, <laughs> um, but so it was it, very tender. In a way, too, that song brought comfort to you. And it was mm -hmm. God speaking to you. So God can speak to us tenderly through music. He can speak to us tenderly through other people, through his word, through... A lot of different ways, right? Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. So I know for me when um, we had a really tough season with our daughter, and um, I can remember going to the Psalms for comfort. I just mm. needed to soak in um, some some real meat <laughs> to be able to sustain uh, the difficulties we were dealing with our daughter. Our daughter, a beautiful girl, just deals with some uh, mental health issues and was very rebellious for a few years as a teenager. And it was just really tough. But I can see now how I received comfort from God. And now I can extend that comfort to others. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the journey that we were on. Um, so do you feel it comforting that God has a purpose for our trials, our struggles, our pain, our disappointment? Is that comforting to know that God has a purpose in it? It doesn't always feel comforting when you're in the middle of them, yeah, right? That's no. why we need to be comforted. But yes. I think that confidence that we're given in knowing 
that, well, number one, we know the end of the story. Mm -hmm. And number two, that God walks with us through whatever we experience in life and God can use all things. Tom loves to come back to that passage from Romans that <laughs> God uses all things for those who follow him to the good. Yes. Um, and that's, that's a very good thought to return to in those moments it when truly is as a mother, we're struggling or um, we're struggling with our purpose and our discernment mm -hmm. or we lose a loved one. I mean, that's a big part of this time of year for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, That's one of my favorite verses is Romans 8:28. Uh, for God works together for the good mm -hmm. for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So whatever's going on in your life, God has a purpose. He has a plan. He has good to come out of it. It doesn't feel good oftentimes, but that's a, such a beautiful scripture to hold on to and to provide comfort when you're in a in a pickle, in a tough situation. Mm. Well, there's another scripture that I think really drives us home, and it comes from uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and 4. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with comfort, with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Well, Father Michael said uh, in Mass that if the Lord uses the same word, it has a strong emphasis. In the Isaiah passage, we saw comfort twice, and here we see comfort five times. So comfort's a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. um, have you had a season in life where you've been able to comfort somebody else based on the way God has comforted you? Yeah, yeah. And I think that idea of spilling over we're not comforted just so we can be comfortable mm -hmm. but so that we can offer that comfort to others yeah. right yeah. that i mean so it's reciprocal all the time with how god wants us to treat it um when i first got to nativity kelly caddick from our staff mm -hmm. in just the first week or two that i was here lost her dad unexpectedly mm. and and he wasn't young but it was still not yeah. something they were anticipating right. um and I really didn't know I was still new. I wasn't sure as a friend, you know, as a colleague, how to really do that. Um, and so I, I just tried to do a couple of little things and to write her a note and, and Beautiful. reach out. But it, I mean, little things, I think you have those opportunities all the time in your life to mm -hmm. be comfort to somebody, mm -hmm. to offer mm -hmm. words, to just be present. Mm -hmm. um, and it does look different all the time. But that was one little situation where I felt like... Mm -hmm. I was called to do something and I didn't even know quite what. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, by offering that kind of comfort, you're offering grace. You're offering uh, the gift of grace when you provide comfort when mm. somebody's hurting. And that's such a beautiful thing. Well, we uh, truly hope that our conversation starts your conversation. And we hope, too, that uh, this season of Advent will bring great grace in your life and it is expressed through comfort. And opportunities for you to comfort others is what we're seeking, right? Absolutely. Will you close us out, Daniel? Yeah. Thank you. Let's pray. God, thank you for this time of year when the days are dark and long, uh, or the nights are long, and we look forward to that special time when we're gathered with loved ones, or maybe we're missing loved ones, but we, um, we still have the promise of your presence. And that brings us great comfort in this time of year. And pray that comfort for those who most need it. And we pray that we can offer that comfort um, mm -hmm. as your vessels. Mm -hmm. We love you. Be with us in our week. We pray this in your name. Of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for participating in small groups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples simply by sharing this video. We're so grateful you're part of our community.